want is right here. We gon' give them what they pay for. We gon' take it down from last year. Two of my sample, I'm long range. Sounds like a win. All right, ready to start this thing. How are you guys doing? Thank you all for being here today. Welcome to the Marty Jacobson Football Performance Center for our MAC introductory press conference. My name is Jay Burnham. I'm the voice of the Minutemen. I'll give you a little rundown here as to what we're going to do today. And just thank you all for being here, and thanks for those uh, joining us online. If you don't have a media packet, first three rows down here are available for our media. You'll find the press release that's in there, quotes, and a lot of information about the new conference that Massachusetts Athletics is heading in. The rundown today will be pretty simple. We'll hear from UMass Chancellor Javier Reyes first, and then Director of Athletics Ryan Bamford, and we'd like to welcome the MAC Commissioner, Dr. John Steinbrecher, for joining us today. We'll let them have their initial comments, and then we'll open things up to questions for this leadership panel. And then after that, we'd like to welcome up um, UMass football head coach Don Brown, and uh, head coach for men's basketball, Frank Martin, and they will have uh, a question and answer uh, session with you all as well after they have their statements. Now, one note, we would also have here uh, women's basketball head coach Mike Leffler, but Coach Leffler and his team won a game yesterday down in the A-10 tournament. They're on a little bit of a roll, so they'll play this afternoon in Richmond at 1.30. We'll be following along. After we're all said and done, we'll have a nice little photo op and then a breakout for any one-on-one -on -one sessions or additional questions uh, that you all may have. So I will step aside and I will hand it over to our Chancellor, Mr. Javier Reyes. Chancellor, it's all yours. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much for the introduction. And I can see behind the balloon over here, so <laughs> very good. Uh, I just want to say thank you all for all of you for coming today. It's, a, it's an exciting day for this university. It's an exciting day for the MAC. Uh, you'll hear a lot from, from, from all of us today, and we'll answer some questions. But I do want to say one thing. Uh, this is the outcome and the result of works of, uh, of work that happened over the years. Uh, I think I want to start by saying, Ryan, thank you all the, the amount of work that you have put into this university. It doesn't go and notice how you have transformed our, 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 our athletics uh, programs all across the board. And this is just but one more step in the direction and the vision that you have set forward for, for UMass. It is, a, it, is, it is a day of change. It is a day of where we're going to our next chapter in our athletics programs, of course joining the MAC, providing a, a, a home for a football team, but continue our investments in all, all our programs. We're doing great in basketball. I see Coach Martin over there. We're doing great in basketball and we'll continue to do so. But we know that this brings a stability to our athletics programs across the board. And with that, it also brings one more thing. The MAC is not only an athletics conference that we can join. The MAC is also uh, joining a set of universities that are like-minded, like UMass. Land-grant, research universities, public universities that face the same realities, that face, face the same challenges, and address the same opportunities across the nation from an academic perspective, a research perspective, being able to build academic consortia, research consortia. And so it's not only about our athletics. It's also about our academic excellence and being able to be 
with partners that are looking at the world and are providing the talent and pipeline of talent in athletics and in academics that will face the challenges of the next generation. So with that said, I just want to say thank you very much, Commissioner, for being here. Thank you for all the conversations we've had. Thank you for the work that you and your team have put together to make this possible. And I would like now to pass the word to Brian Bamford. All right. Thank you, Chancellor. Um, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, this is a really special day for our athletics program. It's as much about um, what we've done in our past as it is about uh, where we're going in our future. And uh, I'd like to recognize uh, our athletics staff, many of whom are here today, uh, for your leadership, for your vision, especially our head coaches and our cabinet members. Um, obviously, for the last 10 days, for organizing this announcement and the work that goes into uh, this press conference and other things, but especially for the ways that we've been able to organize our athletics department to have this opportunity and to meet this moment. Um, very thankful for our band, the best band in the land. Thank you for that introduction. Um, I want to start by just really recognizing and showing our gratitude for the Atlantic 10 Conference, a conference that we were uh, have been a founding member of back in the 70s, conference that has been a wonderful home for us for 48 years. Um, I, I can tell you in the nine years that I've been in the league, um, our athletics programs have thrived in the Atlantic 10. And it's, uh, uh, it's a, an organization of member institutions that want to be excellent. And it's, allowed, it's really pushed us to meet the challenge of being great. And so I want to thank Commissioner McGlade for her leadership, uh, for her partnership, and for all my colleagues in that league and our chancellor, our, the, the campus CEOs. It's been a great league for us, and I want to thank them uh, for recognizing um, the passion that we have and, and instilling even more. And with that, it, I will tell you that this transition and this decision was not made uh, without great thought for what's ahead for our athletics program. Uh, it's no surprise to anyone in this room that college athletics is changing rapidly. It's evolving quickly. Uh, the climate is challenging. Um, the legislative and legal changes and challenges are persisting. And I would tell you that now more than ever, uh, there was an opportunity for us to really focus on two objectives, to focus on alignment and to focus on access. And to and be in a place where we thought we could grow and thrive as an athletics department to meet the next moment, to meet what's ahead of us, and to think about the next 50 years for UMass Athletics. And our decision to go into the Mid-American Conference meets those two objectives. The Chancellor referenced it, the alignment of institutions the public research nature of those institutions, but also the strategic priorities that those institutions and athletic departments have to use athletics as the front porch of the institution to drive excellence is also really unique, but also extremely aligned with where we are as an institution ourselves. And um, when I thought about what was next for us and watching what's happening around us, um, the moment to change conferences is one that you go into and you realize very quickly not only who your peer set is, but you also realize what you want to be. And if I was to say to our athletic staff, which many of you have heard us say, and to those uh, fans and supporters that are watching the press conference, it's time for us to meet that moment and to do so with unapologetic ambition. I referenced in our email last week when we announced on Thursday to all of our supporters that we were going to go into the MAC with the respectful intent to be the standard of excellence, academics and athletics. And I believe that the future is extremely bright because of this relationship, because of the commitment to excellence that we've had, and the impression that I get from everyone associated with this university that we're not just going to go in and think that it's time to relax or rest or be content, but it's time to accelerate. And it's time to do more, and it's time to be better, and it's time to be great. And that is what has me excited about what is ahead for our athletics program. 
I want to thank our chancellor very early in his tenure introducing this concept to him. He's been an unbelievable thought partner. He's been extremely strategic. His, his business acumen, his, uh, the identity that he wants our athletics program to have in the footprint of this university is extremely exciting. Chancellor, thank you for your vision and incorporating athletics so intently into that vision. And then to our new commissioner, Commissioner Steinbrecher, a man who, uh, when I got here nine years ago, we were leaving the MAC as a football uh, member, and I will tell you that I, at the time, and ha has grown my great appreciation uh, for our relationship and for his leadership. I've watched it, and we communicate over the years, have communicated frequently, and I think to uh, have the ability to uh, be in this league under his leadership, I want to thank him. I want to thank his staff, many of, of whom are here today, and the MAC uh, presidents and the MAC athletic directors for their value, for their belief in us, and the value that this institution brings to the Mid American Conference. Thank you. Well, good morning. What a great morning. And before I jump into my remarks, let me introduce a handful of our senior staff who uh, made the trip. Um, I have Chris Turner, who is our Chief Operating Officer and Deputy Commissioner. Ricky Stokes is Senior Associate Commissioner for Men's and Women's Basketball. Kristen Williams, Senior Associate Commissioner for Institutional Services and our Senior Woman Administrator. And Jeremy Guy, who is our Associate Commissioner for Media Relations. A favorite quote of mine is from Abraham Lincoln. He said, I will get ready and maybe someday the chance will come. That's really a philosophy I try to live by. I'm guessing it's a philosophy that our coaches try to impart on their student athletes. And I would say it speaks to where we are today for the Mid-American Conference and for the University of Massachusetts because the chance has now realized itself. And on behalf of the student athletes, of the faculty, the coaches, administrators, and the Council of Presidents of the Mid-American Conference, I am pleased to welcome Massachusetts into our membership. Given that this is the first invitation we have provided since the late 1990s, it should be evident that we don't open our door to just anyone. Among our strengths is the homogeneity of our membership. The Mid-American Conference is an association of public national research institutions. The opportunity to add Massachusetts was simply too great to pass up. It is rare to be able to add a flagship university that is among the finest institutions in the country, along with an athletics program that is broad in its sports offerings and deep in tradition. The addition of Massachusetts offered the unique chance to stretch her geography in a sensible manner into a contiguous state, allowing the conference to maintain the tightest geographic footprint among the FBS conferences while establishing a presence in the Northeast. Our membership takes exceptional pride in being a student-centric conference. We point to such things as having developed the first conference-wide mental health program, which incidentally came from a conversation with our student-athletes, establishing the first conference-wide diversity, equity, and inclusion program, and including perhaps being the first, if not among the first, to include our student-athletes within the governance system of the conference. I want to commend Chancellor Reyes, Director of Athletics Bamford, for shepherding Massachusetts through this membership process. Most specifically, our conversations really picked up in late September, although, as Ryan referenced, we've had a relationship that goes back well over a decade, and we'd have periodic checkpoints. But in somewhere in September, the conversation started again. I think Ryan reached out and we just started that conversation. Um, I actually came to a football game in November very quietly and <laughs> wandered the campus and enjoyed, enjoyed a football Saturday. Um, and this whole process culminated about two weeks ago uh, with the meeting of our Council of Presidents. Uh, 
the strong interest in the Mid-American Conference and tireless advocacy for Massachusetts facilitated a unanimous decision by our Council of Presidents. Today is rightly a celebration of years of effort to get into a full sports conference. However, the demanding work continues. As change is never easy, and our membership needs to continue to work together as we seek to fulfill our potential both on the field and in continuing to meet the intellectual and development needs of our student athletes. Welcome to the Mid-American Conference. All right. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Very much appreciated. Thank you all. Um, we're going to open things up to some questions from the media only. We've got Jeremy Gerard over here on our left and Dan Colloran on my right. Uh, if you have a question, raise your hand and just state your name and your media affiliation and go ahead and direct it at uh, one of our members on the stage. Who's first? Jesse Kolak and Berkshire Eagle. Uh, this question is for, mostly for Ryan, but just what changed in the last two years that really made it seem like you guys were focusing on finding a conference for everything now? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I think um, what we've watched happen around us, the environment, and especially in FBS uh, conferences, I think now, um, you know, moving to nine FBS conferences and the access, I talked about access, the college football evolution, being independent was really not a great long-term strategy. You know, we've had young men in the locker room downstairs who haven't had a chance to fight for a conference championship in eight years. Um, that's a hard thing to talk, you know, to be with your student athletes and not have that ability. Um, but I, I really felt like with uh, the changes in the FBS model, uh, the structure and what's happening to the NCAA, um, this was a, a chance for us to bring uh, a relatively young FBS football program, allow it to allow us to nurture it, to grow it, to invest further in it, but also bring around, along the, the, a portfolio of sports that have had a tremendous amount of success in the Atlantic 10, and I think um, will have transferable success in the MAC and to be able to invest more thoroughly in those uh, opportunities for our young men and women in those programs. It was a good fit in that respect. Um, but with all those environmental changes around us, I, I really, and, and the commissioner made this point, the stability of this league when you're trying to grow your athletics program and invest strategically in it, um, the stability of knowing that this league has not changed membership in the last 20 years, has not added a member in the last 25 plus years. Um, I think really the only other Division One league that can say that is the Ivy League. And this day and age, we're watching all this change happen around us. Um, and even in the Atlantic 10, since 2007, we've had nine members come or go. And, um, and that's, that's really challenging when you're trying to build an identity and a brand. And I think this affords us that opportunity in spades. Good morning. Uh, Jill Kaufman, New England Public Media. Um, you spoke about the merging of athletics and academics. Can you address uh, either Dr. Reyes or Mr. Benford uh, how UMass intends to address the academic needs? I believe athletes will be on the road more in this, um, in this division. You want me to go first? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, you would think that. Um, but I will tell you that two-thirds of our A-10 members, we're getting on an airplane right now to go play those games. And um, the, the missed class time is actually very similar in looking at the profile of the sport offerings in the MAC when they uh, organize their schedules, their league schedules. Obviously, we're, we're fortunate in that our non-league competition in a number of our sports, we have so many Division One institutions within a four to six uh, hour radius that we can get on a bus and play in the non-conference schedule. Um, so we, we don't anticipate that our missed class time uh, will, will be an, an issue at all. Um, and we've had those conversations with the academic side of our enterprise. Our faculty athletic rep does an amazing job of helping us steward that process and being thoughtful about that. And um, the cost will go up a little bit uh, because we will be traveling a little bit more by plane 
lane, but it's it's a five to eight percent increase. And uh, with the advanced revenues that we're going to see in this conference, we think that it's a calculated, uh, you know, opportunity for us to expand ourselves. And really, we're in a we're in a, a relatively national league now, so we we feel like it's it's relatively comparable with institutions already in Chicago and St. Louis University and having to go to Davidson and the Richmond schools and, and Dayton and Duquesne. So it's a um, similar footprint in a lot of ways. Let me build on that a little bit and focus more on the faculty. Yeah. And one of the neat things we've developed in our league is an academic consortium, which really has two levels to it. One is a collaborative research effort, which Kristen Williams back behind us is helping to shepherd. Uh, the other is our academic leadership development program, in which we're helping to develop the next generation of leaders in higher education. And with all of our institutions working together as we bring together uh, an array of people every year, and we're starting to see the fruit of that as these people are now moving on and becoming chairs of departments, deans, provosts, etc. And if, if, I, if I can uh, expand on that, I am the product of such an uh, academic leadership consortium. When I was at the University of Arkansas, uh, which is part of the, the SEC, there was the SEC Academic Leadership Program, and it develops talented faculty members into possibly administrators with an understanding of, a peripheral understanding of the whole university. So one of the presidents that is no longer in the, in, in, in the MAC, who used to be the Provost at Arkansas became a president at Toledo and worked with another president there to establish this academic leadership program. And it really brings the faculty into the, into the membership, into the conference, and creates a lot of research initiatives. It creates a lot of exchange with the students. It creates a very nice academic environment related to our athletics, but not defined by it. And it's, I think, expanded. Um, this question is mainly for uh, Ryan, uh, Quinn McCarran, Midnight Ride NIL. Um, over the next five years, we're going to see UMass moving uh, into the MAC for football. But what are some other steps that the program is going to be taking in order to raise the level of competition? Yeah, I, I think uh, when you, you know, I, I referenced it a little bit in my opening remarks, when you have transition like this, I think the, the real um, defining moment back in the summer and fall when uh, we were watching all this change happen around us is the ability to look inward and make sure that we're doing things that are going to allow us to grow and to prosper and to build excellence. And so, um, you know, the, the investments that we've made in our athletics program in my tenure, I think, have been strategic, have allowed allowed us to build um, a, a better academic experience, social experience, and certainly competitive experience. I think from a standpoint of our football program, um, you know, I, we have a, a, a big, bold vision, and this is, this is an opportunity for us to reframe our vision and reimagine our outcomes and our goals and to build a campaign for excellence in athletics. But we have a big, bold vision to change the infrastructure of this stadium. To, to change what this facility can do, not only for its football program, but for this campus at large and for the campus community. Because I think at the leading public research universities, especially the flagship campuses uh, across this country, it's such an integral part of the campus experience. And we, we have to make sure that we're getting to a position where we can say that every day, that it's, it's, we've integrated ourselves fully into the campus experience for every student that comes to the university. And so that's a, that's a very big picture uh, idea, but there's a lot of uh, things that go into that that I think will add up and ultimately allow us to reach that goal. And if, if I can add one thing, that it's, it's an important aspect that we're not looking at one facility at a time. We're looking at the campus as a whole. 
we're trying to get an understanding when you have a change in chancellors that you look at the strategic plan for the university for the next 10 years. And we're working with our, with our, with our administration to look at every part of our campus when it comes to our residence hall, when it comes to our academic class, when it's our, our classrooms, our offices, our athletics facilities, our performing arts facilities. Everything is being looked at in conjunction to be able to have a vision for the campus that it gets completed with a strong investment in all areas, including what we're doing with our, with, with, with our track and field, what we will do with basketball, what we're doing with hockey, what we're doing with football. It's important to say it has to be a complete picture and not looking at one at a time. And that's what you will be hearing over the next, I would say, 12, 15 months as we complete all our strategic plan. What are we going to be doing in those areas? Major Grace Suarez, Massachusetts, David Collegian, Ryan. How much did your previous experience when you know ha having that decision whether to leave the Atlantic 10 or not influence your decision making this time around? Was there a lesson to be learning maybe leaving at the right time or something like that? Well, the, the decision to leave, uh, to, to not come to the MAC as an all-sport uh, member predated me. And so I came in in the year that we were, we were leaving as a, as a football member. Um, I, you know, I would say this day and age in college athletics, one of the real advantages that I think our industry has is um, it's a fraternity in a lot of ways of ADs and coaches, and there's real um, opportunity to understand best practices and understand um, how to universally explore opportunities. And so there's no shortage of ADs who have gone through conference uh, realignment decisions. So I had a lot of colleagues that I leaned on to make sure that I was thinking about this and I could present it to our campus leader and to our trustees in the right way and also frame the conversations that I could have with Commissioner Steinbrecher. Um, <clears throat> and again, I, I referenced before it's a moment in time for us. And this is a powerful moment for us to take advantage of this opportunity. And, um, and, 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 and I think I think for the decision that we were undertaking in the last six months or so, um, I was really resolute in making sure that it's, it's a great strategy for the long-term health of our programs. And um, because you, you don't want to mortgage the success or the future for any of your student athletes or your coaches or your staff members. And I felt like this was in that way really met, um, met that decision point and that data point for us. Gary Cody, Daily Hampshire Gazette. Uh, this one's for the commissioner. Um, do you anticipate seeing MAC programs invest more uh, into their basketball programs to compete with uh, a team as strong as UMass or with a budget as big as UMass? I certainly hope so. Um, we have high expectations. We've had very good success at times. If I go back pre-COVID, we had a decade where we were very consistently in the top third of conferences. We would expect to get there again. One of the things that is attractive about this is bringing in a basketball brand such as the University of Massachusetts. We think that will help us to, again, reignite that. Now, we've got work to do, no doubt about that. But I'm, uh, I have faith that we're going to get there. Uh, Glenn Kittle from Western Mass News. Uh, my question is for Chancellor Reyes. Uh, we talked about that financial impact uh, earlier in terms of travel expenses. What overall estimates for financial impact in this university are we looking like in terms of possible dollars made, or will students feel financial impacts potentially? Well, I can tell you that this will bring Chris Reyes to university. The exact numbers I would have to rely on Ryan and be able to present more details. But we, we, we went into this knowing that we also need to have more resources, not only for athletics program, but also for our university. And this gives us the best opportunity to get there. We, we've, we uh, just to give you some context on that, um, there's, there's a couple of factors that are still to be determined relative to the conference's uh, distribution with the college football playoff and some other things. Um, but this will grow, allow us to grow our revenues to the department by anywhere from eight to ten times uh, what we're currently uh, seeing you know, from a conference standpoint. Um, 
right as we enter the league. And I think the ability to grow that over time is really going to be an impactful piece uh, to our, our growth as a department. And one of the things that are very intangible benefits that you can see, but being able to be uh, playing on a Wednesday night nationally, being able to have consistently consistent business to specific areas of the country, that will allow us to fly the UMass flag in many places in ways that it will result in increasing our stature, our reputation, increasing our recruitment and enrollment, increasing the interest of those cities in our students, and we will fight them for them, I'll tell you that. But we want them to, keep, to stay in Massachusetts when they come study here. But there are a lot of intangibles of having such a strong brand and generating such a strong brand nationally that elevates the stature of the university. And those are not measured in revenue. There's it's a return on investment that happens because you're seeing the UMass flag out there consistently in places that you didn't see it before. Dean Wendell, Massachusetts Daily Collegian. For Ryan, in today's day and age with some college athletics conferences being coast to coast, did the tighter footprint of the MAC make it a primary option for you, or was it more of a benefit that came on later in the decision-making process? No, I think their ge geographical footprint, I referenced it earlier, it's not that dissimilar from, uh, in a lot of ways from what we're seeing now in the Atlantic 10. We have a number of um, you know, Midwest schools, member schools. Um, again, I think the alignment of public research universities cities in, in really good places in our country, fertile recruiting areas. Um, we certainly watched Mid-American Conference schools take advantage and activate on those regional relationships. Um, the contiguous aspect of, contiguous state aspect of being next to the flagship state university, Buffalo, uh, being able to take a ride out there and, and, and maybe build a, a nice budding rivalry. Mark Allnut and I have talked about that, uh, their AD. And I think um, I think that's got a lot of potential. Um, so that was important to us as well. Um, so certainly something we looked at. I think we've we've all watched what conference realignment has done from a geographical standpoint. That way, it was important for us to try to stay tight, and the, the commissioner referenced that. I think it was important for their conference to do that too, and we had to make sure that we were answering those questions uh, appropriately for them to feel good about bringing the University of Massachusetts into their into their footprint. We'll take uh, one more for this panel, and then a reminder: we will have uh, breakout sessions after we're done before we hear from our uh, from our coaching staff so one more if at all down here <laughs> Hi, uh, Connor Pignatello with the Hampshire Gazette. Um, so you just mentioned about you know potential rivalry with with Buffalo, um, and you guys have talked about you know aligning and so. I wonder what you know peer institution wise, you know what other schools in the MAC do you believe UMass has a you know future you know, align themselves with? Uh, you know, obviously Buffalo stands out for those geographical reasons and the, the flagship nature. Obviously, um, you know, having four R1 research universities in the league, I think all of the things that we talked about from an academic and research uh, and realizing those opportunities for us, I don't, I, I think it's a tough question to answer until we get in. And I think every sport has, I've, I've watched, we've studied what the MAC has done in all sorts of our Olympic sports and where do we fit. And I think by sport, there's probably Probably going to be some built-in rivalries because of excellence and success and those things. And I kind of like for our programs to carve out their own, you know, identity. But I, I think Buffalo is the natural one. Um, but certainly, we 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 want to go and be great member partners, great member institution, and um, and 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 build our own identity in there very quickly. And hopefully, um, you know, allow ourselves to find success and build those traditional rivalries that I think make college athletics so great. Yeah. All right, how about a round of applause for our panel here at the start. Ryan, we're going to keep you there. Chancellor and Commissioner, you guys can uh, step off stage, and, but stick around because we're going to have you after the press conference as well. Chancellor talked about playing midweek, didn't use the appropriate terminology of action, so we'll let it, that one slide. We'd like to uh, we'd like to welcome up uh, football coach Don Brown and men's basketball coach Frank Martin. Have a round of applause for them. And, and as I stated earlier, we're down a 
We're down a coach because uh, Coach Mike Leffler and the women's basketball program are currently in the midst of an A-10 run. So big win for them yesterday against LaSalle. They'll play against Duquesne today at 1.30. And, of course, a big win last night for Coach Martin and his guys to get to 20 wins for the first time in a decade. So congratulations, guys. I'm going to uh, open up uh, just some introductory comments. Coach Brown, we'll start with you, and then Coach Martin, and then we'll have uh, our, our Q&A uh, with the coaches. Yeah, yeah buddy. We're, we're excited. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, we've got a group of guys that uh, have been itching for eight years to, to compete for a conference title. And when you have that as your, you know, that's, that's what you're looking for, for your players to achieve, um, it certainly is a, uh, a big step. And uh, it's nice for our guys to have the opportunity. Uh, and we're certainly excited about it. Ryan, uh, Chancellor, for all the good hard work that they've done in making this happen. And uh, we're going to certainly do our best to represent the university the right way for sure. Coach Martin? I guess we entered the transfer portal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 uh, uh, one of the reasons I came to UMass because of the, the vision and the commitment uh, uh, for this university's athletic department to be great. Uh, I was sold on that by Ryan, uh, by the leadership of the university. Um, uh, obviously in basketball, because it's the sport I coach, uh, I want to be given an opportunity to lead a program that not only competes for a conference championship, but also can align itself based on the history of this program where you can compete for a national championship. Uh, that was very appealing to me. Um, Don Brown, who's been a friend for 25 years, uh, was one of the phone calls I got to convince me to come to school, to come be the coach here. And um, coming from where I've been before I came to UMass, I've seen what investing in football does for the whole athletic department. Uh, as a coach, when I was young, uh, I'd get frustrated when I needed more for our program from whoever had Ryan's job. And they say, I can't, but then I saw all this investment in football, football, football. And as I've gone through my journey, uh, there's one sport that elevates all of us to a different place, and that's football. And when this university made a decision uh, to go Division One in football, um, it, it was important. It, I understood all this before I took the job, uh, that eventually this day was coming. And, and the Atlantic 10 does not offer that opportunity uh, for our university, but obviously the MAC does. And uh, I'm super excited. I'm excited for the future. I'm excited for, uh, like I put it on Twitter that one day, for those of you who do Twitter, uh, I don't read it, but I'll put my thoughts on there so people can, uh, can, can know what I'm thinking about. Uh, change brings growth. Uh, change is coming. And, uh, and sometimes we control change, and sometimes change controls us. But it's coming. And when it comes, we got to be excited for the change. Um, and that gives us an opportunity, uh, like has been stated here, to reach out to different parts. It's, it's 2024. The old conference alignments aren't what they used to be 20 years ago. Uh, uh, so I'm excited. Uh, something new. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, I think it's going to be great for our university as we move forward. All right, questions for Coach Brown or Coach Martin? Go down to Pedro. Frank, when you look down the MAC, uh, in terms of the competition level, what do you see are some of the pros and cons of the move? Uh, like I told Commissioner when I walked in, I, I haven't had a chance. I've been a little busy here for the last six months. Uh, I haven't had a chance to sit there and study the league right now. Uh, but being in basketball for a long, as long as I have, spending time in the Midwest, 
Uh, the MAC has some very respected basketball programs in it. Uh, there, I got some guys that coach in that league that I respect and I'm very friendly with. Um, conference basketball is really hard. Uh, don't fall victim for the analytics. Okay, all the rankings of conferences and all that are tied in the nets. Uh, the, the net makes no sense right now. So I, I can't sit here and 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 tell you. I'm worried about winning some games next week. I, I can't sit here and give you a perfect example of um, how we can improve the MAC or what opinions I have. I'm not invested in that one yet. I will be. And I, what I can tell you is that everything I know about the MAC, it's really good basketball. And and my vision as we go into the MAC um, is. No different than the one we had in the A-10 when I got here. Let's build a program that can compete for a conference championship. And if we can do that, uh, then it puts you in a place where you can succeed in an NCAA tournament. And if you can succeed in the NCAA tournament, uh, everything is, is where it needs to be. That's what the, the ultimate objective is. And um, so I, I, I can't sit here and give you exact details right now, but I can tell you I got tremendous respect for a bunch of coaches in that league. And and, uh, uh, and I'm, you know, I, I spend time in the Midwest, man. Midwest basketball is a whole lot of fun. I know us out here in the East Coast don't really understand it sometimes. I've been in the Midwest. Midwest basketball is really good. So I'm, ex I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm excited for uh, to recruit. I, I haven't recruited the Midwest in a while. I did for a while. Cincinnati, K-State, I spent a lot of time in the Midwest recruiting. Uh, I'm excited to merge the East Coast and the Midwest and figure it out. That's where change is fun. You know, you get bored if you're running the same offense every single day. You get bored if, like when you deal with people, if you're constantly coaching the same person the same way, it gets boring. Uh, when you can grow and, and adjust to different areas and figure stuff out, um, you know, that's where excitement comes from and that's where our growth will come from. Connor Pignatello, Daily Hampshire Gazette. Uh, this one's for Coach Brown and, and Ryan. Uh, you guys mentioned, you know, kind of the long-term viability of being an FBS independent and, you know, now being able to play for a conference championship. How would you evaluate uh, UMass's time as an independent, and was it necessary to ultimately join a conference? I would describe it as hard, very hard. Um, you know, I, I think the the stability piece of this conference is a, is is something I can't overstate in that. Um, Every year, he has to prepare for 12 new different opponents. And two or three of them are power five opponents. That's hard. That is challenging. And to build a program when we're just over a decade old as an FBS program, when you're an independent, th those layers that you add into the to the dynamic, that that structurally is hard to overcome. That. So now we go in, and perhaps that five, six, seven. I don't know how many of our opponents year to year will be the same. We'll wait to see what the the uh, the, the conference organizes from a schedule standpoint. But when you have that. Familiar Familiarity for two thirds of your your schedule or three quarters of your schedule, that, that that's powerful for for them. That's powerful for and for our guys to have that familiarity. So, I think in that respect and going into any conference, but especially this one where we're very similarly resourced, right? We we, we recruit a lot against Mid American conferences. Um, we recruit out of the same pockets of places for for for, uh, for prospective student athletes. So, from my standpoint, from my seat, I think this allows us again to nurture our football program for ultimate growth, which is what we need right now. And we, we weren't really able to ever take get that to take hold as an independent. Yeah, there's a, <clears throat> just to just to kind of hit on a couple of things Ryan talked about. Scheme is a big part of college football. Uh, offensively, defensively, special teams, scheme is a big deal. It's nice when you have some continuity and you're playing eight, nine opponents a year 
where you're playing them virtually every year. Well, then you're, you're, you know, your preparation can take hold, and it's not like you're starting from scratch. For example, we're, we're playing Auburn one week. Uh, I mean, next, this coming year, we're going to play Georgia one week. Then we're playing uh, Missouri. Then we're playing Mississippi State. Well, not only do you have the physical challenge, which those teams present, but the, the new challenge of their concept and their scheme and getting them and getting our guys lined up, ready to go, and competing at a high level. And uh, it's just nice when you have eight opponents now, and, and we're no stranger to the MAC. We've played two, three, four teams. Next year we're playing five MAC opponents. So, you know, obviously it, it's almost like we're getting a transition year. <laughs> And uh, but I but I also I'll give you a quick point. Um, like I was telling the guys the other day, we were talking about our move to the MAC, and the first thing we said was, "Now we've talked about this move. It's two years from now. Let's go back to work and worry about what's in front of us." And that's really the important thing for us is we have to pay attention to what's in front of us, and that's the schedule for next year. I mean, Tori, Boston Globe, uh, this one's for Frank. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about uh, how this move um, affects recruiting and that kind of thing. You were recruited here in a way just under two years ago, um, and part of that was coaching in the A-10, a basketball first conference. Um, in that process, the hiring process, the interview process, how much does the conference you're coaching in, how much did that matter to you, or was it just sort of secondary to things like facilities, the university, obviously your family connection, et cetera? Um... Coaching the Atlantic 10 was appealing to me because uh, I've done most of my recruiting on the East Coast. Um, uh, I came here to coach at UMass, though. I didn't come here to coach against Atlantic 10 schools. I came here uh, to help Ryan, uh, who believes in, uh, in, in giving us what we need to elevate our program, uh, to compete for a conference championship. Um, with all due respect, uh, last year I was the coach here and we played these long standing uh, rivalries. Nobody came to games. And we need people to root for UMass, and that's what's happening this year. Our players played a certain way, we won some games, and our attendance just started to blow up as the season went on. Um, you know, we, 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 I coach at UMass. I don't coach for the A-10. My job is to help UMass grow. As long as the school leadership, and I truly believe, they believed in me, and they haven't lied to me since I've been here, so why would I not believe in their vision as to what's best for us? Uh, as long as the school leadership is committed uh, to allowing us to continue to grow, I'm all in. Let's we'll go play. We'll go play on the beach. We'll play in a park. We'll play in the backyard. It, it, at the end of the day, you're competing, and and you know that's not to put this back on football. All of us coaches in this room, we all belong to a league, man. There's a trophy they put at the end of the season on the table and say go. You know they they deserve that opportunity too. I'm a team guy. I'm not a. And by the way, this whole—it's a basketball school. It's a football school. It's UMass. It's not one or the other. It's—we're uh, uh, all in this together. We're all in this to elevate our profiles, elevate our programs, uh, so we can all coexist and enjoy each other's success. That's 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 why we do this. And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm you know I was at K State, and when we got to K State. Um, the basketball had kind of floundered, and there's a guy there named Bill Snyder that's pretty darn good at his job, and he had just retired, and everyone said, it's a basketball school, we need basketball, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, like, how can you say this? And I understood K-State's history in basketball, um, and... Uh, we continued to work, and it became like football. They upgraded football facilities. They invested so much in football, even though we started to win, and they were trying to figure it out again. Guess what happened? It got better for everybody. 
It got better. Our, the budget at basketball went up. The budget in track went up. I, I want My wife was a track athlete here. So I don't view this as a basketball coach. I view this as somebody that's invested in making it better for everybody here. Uh, elevating football is going to make it better for everybody. And that's that's the that's the, the, the vision. So I, I, I'm not into it's a basketball school, it's a football school. I, you know, it's uh, I, I'm, we're UMass, man, and we're, we're going to go out there and play whoever's in front of us. And we our job is to represent this university and represent the winning ways and the culture that's created by the leadership of this university uh, to, to make sure that, that we do what we're supposed to do. We'll take uh, one more for the coach. Yeah, can ahead. I just follow up on that too? I, I want to make a, a point that I don't, I don't think Frank or I have made publicly. <clears throat> and it was in the recruitment and the, 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 the search process two years ago with Frank. Um, we had a, a, an introductory meeting, and Frank and I knew each other, and obviously Anya's wife is an alum, and they've been really supportive of our department and our program, our track and field program especially. And then a fir first meeting was three or four hours, and we talked a lot about just big picture, where we were, where the A-10 was. One of the second meeting when I went down to visit Frank and Anya in their house, and I sat in Frank's office, <clears throat> one of the things that we talked about, and I, I, I distinctly remember saying to Frank, we're, we're taking a big step in our investment in basketball with you coming. You coming is going to allow us to ramp up our resources for basketball, allow us to build a competitive program that's going to get back into the, you know, top half, top third of the A-10. And to his, he said to me, it's going to take two years. And at two years, we're going to, together, we're going to evaluate where we are. Right? You remember saying this? And we said, and I said at that point, it's going to be important for you to understand that I'm going to do everything I can in those two years to be prepared for that moment to invest even further. Whether we're in the A-10 or we're in the MAC, that investment needs to keep happening for our basketball program to, to flourish. We have the right head coach to allow us to do that. He's an unbelievable leader of our young men. He's, a, he's got an unbelievable vision that he's been able to not only sell us internally on, but I think now sell uh, uh, everybody externally on what we can be. And so when you think about two years into his tenure, but you also think about the perfect storm of now joining the Mid-American Conference, we're, we're, I said it in my opening statement, we're not resting, we're not content, we're not relaxing, we're ramping up. And the investment doesn't stop, it doesn't rest, it doesn't, we're hitting all gas, no brakes, and we're going to go. And we're going to try to really do what all we can to hit conference championships and to go to the NCAA tournament and all of our sports. But it's my commitment to him and what I said to him two years ago, the time, we're on target, the timing's right. Because he said, I th Ryan, I think I can get us into the top five. Here we are, two years in. But it's going to take more to get us the top two, to win the league, to be an at-large selection. And so everything that we talked about two years ago, it's still on target. And I'm excited about that. And talking to Frank the last 10 days, I think, I think he's excited about that too because we're, we're exactly where we thought we would be and exactly funding it and investing in it in the way that we wanted to. All right, we'll take uh, one more for our coaches panel, and then we'll have a photo op uh, with all of our guests, and then we'll break out to one-on-one -on -one sessions. Also, we've got uh, lunch on the horizon as well. So, Jesse, last question here. Uh, yeah, both coaches. Just recruiting has become very national nowadays, but you, because you're playing schools that are going to be so contig contiguous next to each other, how does that help your recruiting in the Midwest? Well, the, the one thing I just look at is our recruiting period. And uh, right now, we're, if, if we were to evaluate, and somebody had done this, uh, if they evaluated our, uh, where we are in recruiting, we'd be at the top of the MAC in terms of our recruitment picture. So we feel good about that, and it's based on a decision that we made going into the portal, uh, getting older, uh, but also getting to know those players 
on a you know on a on a personal level so that we kind of know what we're getting into and they know what they, we're, they're getting into when they come with us and uh, we think that's been a strategic move for us in terms of recruiting and um, you know obviously we're starting to feel those positive pieces on the field with our you know beating army for the first time in our history and uh, obviously, uh, you know, beating New Mexico State early. Uh, so, you know, we feel like we're going in the right direction and uh, excited about the path as well. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, you want to touch on that too, Frank? You can take shots at me. I can't believe you took a shot at the chancellor earlier. I mean, what are you thinking of? Like, you want me to shut up? Just tell me. I... Yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. You want you want my sure. yeah, it, <laughs> recruiting's. If you're not excited about where you work at, you're not recruiting good players. You got to roll up your sleeves and convince people to believe in your school. Uh, when we got to Northeastern and we basically got hired at Northeastern, me as an assistant, him as as a head football coach, our offices are next door to each other. That was scary, by the way. Oh my God. <laughs> Imagine us 25 years ago. We both had more energy back then, but but both programs were in the dumps, and we had nothing to sell. We had no facilities. We didn't have like bells and whistles, and we convinced eight kids from South Florida to come play basketball at Northeastern University and flipped the program from a seven-win team, six-win team to a 24-win team. They went from the worst one double boy program in the country to the preseason number one double boy football program in the country in that same time period. So if you're not excited about what you're selling, you're not going to recruit anyone that's any good. You've got to have a vision. You've got to have a purpose. You've got to have a commitment to recruiting. It's not about getting on a private plane and showing up with a Rolex watch and wheeling and dealing. It's about working, making people know that you believe in them so they can invest their futures with you and the people that you're a part of. Uh, the interesting part in basketball, and anyone that knows basketball knows this, Midwest kids don't really come to the East Coast, and East Coast kids don't really go to the Midwest. Well, I got to figure that one out because I really like what I sell at UMass, and that's that's over the next two years. That's my mission and my staff's mission. We got to figure that one out and and how we're going to do that. But guess what? Uh, there's places like the South and the West Coast, and I got a guy from California on my team. I, I mean, it, yeah, it's from Indiana. The guy from Gary, Indiana. I mean. It, it, you, you got to roll up your sleeves and go. Recruiting, the, the the recruiting of 25 years ago, where everything was regionalized, that's out the window, man. Yeah. That, that that thing's over with. All right, how about a round of applause for our coaches? I'd like you guys to stay right there and welcome back the chancellor and commissioner for a photo opportunity. As uh, we'll grab, we've got some jerseys here bearing the number 13, which is representative of UMass being the 13th school to, uh, to join the MAC. And as I mentioned earlier, if you guys have additional questions, once we're done with this photo opportunity, you can pull our uh, coaches or administrators aside and, and ask them anything that you didn't get a chance to, to hear or any follow-ups that you'd like. But um, we've got those jerseys. All right. A little music, yeah. There we go.
guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Coach Brown, Coach Martin, you guys are free to, uh, to leave. We're going to have food in a second. If anybody